everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3 with this Prussian campaign. Last time around, I don't actually quite recall what we did last time. I think... We, yes, we defeated the Danish, didn't we? Uh, that's the most recent thing. I've done a few turns since then, as we can see. I think Winter just arrived, maybe, in last video. I don't actually recall for some reason. Um... Anyways, since then, I actually did quite a few turns, I think, I'm pretty sure, and I realized the problem. Uh, one of the unseen consequences of me dicking around with um, being uh, signing peace treaties with France all the time, uh, just to break, the, just to get Austria to give me stuff to go back to war, uh, has unfortunately led to my alliance with Britain actually breaking down to the point where I think Britain was planning to invade me and whatever I wanted to give them they simply refused it so I tried to give them tons of different sort of um, technologies and stuff but eventually I decided you know what what they really want is me to be at war with France so I offered I'll go to war with France and I also actually researched um, bottling and canning and I gave them that technology. So, um, now, hopefully, everything's fine. Uh, we are allied with Britain. However, we're only at about 85 um, points of happiness. So, they're not as happy as some of the other uh, allied nations. I'm wondering if it, the relations are also breaking down because I think Hanover is one of their, like, victory locations. Um, we'll share military access as well. No, apparently not. Uh, what if I give you more? I offer you indefinite, and I get ten. Uh, little, okay. I kind of want them to land it and go in through here. Um, right, so we're at war with France again. Denmark, even though we're allied with the, uh, not we're allied with them, we're uh, at peace, have sent the navy right here. So it's kind of obvious what they're trying to do. However, I anticipated this move and I have had uh, Blucher march all the way through Sweden ready to uh, attack Christiania, um, now known as Oslo. Um, however, there is uh, Rebellion brewing back in Copenhagen, so we've had to send the prince and he's gonna hopefully quell the rebellion. Hopefully Britain will Sod off with his navy. I've seen a co comments about doing navy, but like both Bavaria and Prussia have capped navies My biggest ship is the 38 gun Prussian frigate, which I think is bigger than I think for Bavaria we only had the 32 gun uh, frigate, so we have a 38, which is a little bit bigger, but most of the naval powers we would be going up against, say Den Denmark would be a naval power I could probably actually take on, because seemingly they have a capped navy, but there's no way I would be able to take on, say, the English Great Britain. I know people always, like, always get comments about that, calling them the English rather than Great Britain, um, and I mean going against the Spain Spanish or French navies, they've got 80 gun ships, so... I mean, when I did my Bavaria, I think we came up against ships that, you know, had more like a single enemy ship had more guns on it than my entire fleet. Um, so, na it's not really a naval nation, Prussia. Um, so my plan is... To, well, we'll do the Battle of Christiana this time around. And I'll release Norway, I think, as its own nation. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, and then we need to deal with France. The thing is, though, I don't want to go straight into, like... It's like a torrent that's going straight through like this. And I don't want to just stick my little hand in there and get it blown off. So my idea has always been that we're going to go through here and attack their base instead and kind of cap them from over there and cause a disruption in the supply. Even s the Spanish armies have turned up here. 
So their allies are actually... Russia. Russia hasn't really done anything. I don't know where all the Russian armies went, because there were quite a few marching around in my territory, but now they seem to have gone. And, I mean, we've got quite a major problem with the French taking Vienna, which is a major blow to Austria. So, we're definitely going to see um, French armies probably heading north. We have already have a few moving in, burning these mines and stuff. Uh, I do have a lot of money at this point, so there's definitely enough to have another army and completely extend this to be a proper um, Saxon army. Uh, as of yet, I haven't seen any movements towards going through here. I think last time around I said the idea was to strike again down through here, but there was just too many armies at that point uh, along the border here that I decided against it. And then we had other problems turning up up here. Um, so I guess we kind of kind of has to. I kind of have to go and uh, you know do some bold stuff. So my idea is to march this one, switch this one out, so the Saxon will hold here, and they will hold it alone. When this one will start its march towards this area, and then one of the armies here, either Blue Sure. Or the prince's army will move down there. So we'll have two going on this front. And the idea is to shock them into submission really quickly. So I don't want to get locked into uh, a drawn out conflict here. So very quickly, pang, pang. Go in. Take those out. Taking out Paris is going to do major amount of damage to France. Hopefully I can maybe, because I think possibly you can liberate this to his own region. I think you can in Empire. Um, so we'll see about uh, doing as much such mischiefs as possible. Uh, one thing that I could do is, since we created vassals here, is to attack here and create a vassal there. And in so doing, I would just kind of split the sort of the French, or the French would have to go through like this, if you remember my Austrian playthrough where we did a similar thing, so the French had to go through here to attack and that could give Austria time to recuperate. So maybe that would be the plan, to have one army going here and one going trying to release whatever nation was here. If there, no I don't think there is one. It would be baden württemberg then, we would try to release. Because this one doesn't become a single region, why did I think that? Anyways, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and preemptively strike Denmark. And declare war on them. We're not gonna ask anyone else to join, because I think someone might go against it. And I really don't want to lose any uh, more allies than I need to and we'd, we're not we're not gonna need anyone in this surprise warfare that we can acting what is this Eric nine bloomer a hundred and four Norwegian ski troops apparently stop us in an ambush um Wow. I mean, you would... <laughs> right. Um, 104 Norwegians stand in between us and the Danish army residing in the capital. So they ambush us and apparently that's enough to stop us and send have the rest of their army sending in. I was hoping I was going to finish this in one battle, but I guess that's not the case. So, without further ado... Let's uh, respond to this ambush. Right, and of course it starts off immediately without anything. And we have the ski troop right there, which is not uh, trying to engage us. And we've got the enemy army coming in there. Um, so let's start to guess deploy. Someone said I should get three cannons for each army. Which sounds like a good plan, actually, to have, like, be able to, when I set up my line, to have one cannon in the center and then two on the flanks to be able to cover uh, a much wider area. 
the cavalry will fan out on this side and then sweep away those Norwegian ski troops. The light infantry will move up to stop there. The uh, engineers will up to place stakes. The uh, line infantry and the grenadiers will fan out on either side of the cannon. Uh, the ski troops are getting away. I'm sending the Polish lancers. Could be a mistake. We've got Danish horsemen making their way down towards us. The rifles are open firing on them, but I mean at that range they're not doing much. I'm gonna move into a square there and try to stop the Danish cavalry. Prussian Grenadiers should be able to hold on against them. Spikes down, cannons deploy. The square held. We're gonna hold the square for a little bit longer. The Danish might decide to counter charge. We've got the ski troop, but guard horsemen, the lancers can definitely not stand against that, so we're gonna retreat. Since the enemy is pursuing, I'll send up the dragoons to see about stopping the enemy. The hussars will go to this side, and at this point, the uh, what's they called? Our men are running. The light infantry kind of needs to retreat from their position. We'll switch to canister on the cannons. The Danish cavalry rides straight into the line infantry. It's definitely not going to help them. The light infantry, unfortunately, was caught out there. I need to get, get that square back in order. The Danish cavalry's got no chance trying to break through here. Only gonna run into loads of problems trying to break through. They're not supported by infantry either, as you can note. There's two hussars fighting each other. Right, I think I finally can move the square. We'll put the Hussars over here. Ooh, the um, the rifles lost a lot more men than I thought they would. Switch to firing round shot. Silly Danish send in their uh, cavalry before they send in their Infantry. I don't think these guys have any cannons either, so we'll definitely have the advantage there as well. They didn't have a lot of troops though. They had about 4,000, which is a lot larger force than we have. And they have quite a bit of uh, grenadiers and stuff. Which I doubt they'd be able to actually recruit up in Norway. So it might have been an army that they already had that was maybe sent up there. Or I don't know what they actually have in Norway. If they have like a... Um, like the governmental building or if they have a... Uh, a what's it called? Good general stuff. A... Uh, like a barrack building. I think it's time probably to switch to canister to prepare for that. Danish Jaegers. Got the Danish general deciding to kill himself by trying to attack the uh, 
Prussian Grenadiers. Almost looked like we just shot the general, but he's the guy right here. <laughs> it's how it looked like he was gonna run out just to stab him. Right, back into line. Ooh, I don't like the fact they're sending way too many troops out here. I want to kind of retreat the cavalry. Their charge over here is it's gonna fail. I don't know why they sent the Danish light troops, the Jaegers, up this close. Aren't the Hussars out here? These guys marching straight onto my canister, but we're gonna have a problem up here. We're definitely gonna have a problem up there. Where? Let's see if I'm able to actually get those guys back. Ski troops. The enemy cavalry is actually plowing into my infantry over here. I'll move the general to support. Cavalry is soon to follow in their charges to support here. So I think we'll take both the dragoons and sweep them in there and then we'll just have the lancers go ahead and get the Jaegers. And here come my dragoons to sweep in on the Danish advance. Break them. The Danish center has fallen. And the Hussars and the Dragoons are sent to clean it all up. And the Lance has got, got those Jaegers up there. Dragoons got through. Hussars sweeping away. It went very well, I must say. Because we can see the entire Danish army is in full retreat and unlike last time we managed to get a situation like this, uh, it looks as though I'm going to be able to follow this up and um, chase down all of these guys to the point where they're not going to be a threat anymore. And here we're even sandwiching the sandwiching them from multiple directions. The lancers going in, cutting down the light squad of the Danish army here. And my cavalry just sweeping in and killing all of them. And within within ten minutes we've more or less gotten all of the Danish army. You will switch to round shot and you will target that single line infantry that's still fighting. And we need to catch that guy so this side will march up to meet him and I guess we can bring up this side as well. Oh, there's another one unit that's regrouping. And given that I was able to chase down as many enemies as I were, it's uh, really going to help us when we go up against the city. It, it's a bit too close for my liking for these two regiments. We'll move them back a bit. And these two can actually, or these five can move up closer. So this was definitely well executed, or maybe poorly executed by the Danish. Rather so than expertly executed by me. But I guess the ti the timing was the thing that mattered here. The timing was perfect. Where we managed to break the entire Danish army in one quick fell sweep. Or in one like go there. And uh, we just chased everything down. 
to the point where I think a few of these units were utterly annihilated. There's a... Yeah, ooh. We're shooting cannon down on our, our own now. So hold fire. Not entirely sure what they were thinking here. They're running straight into the Grenadiers. There's one unit left though. Damn, an utter disaster for the Danish. And the battle wasn't even 15 minutes. These guys in the forest though kind of hold out. So, lancers will come in from the back. Just absolute slaughter. There were some faults still though, like, probably should have pulled back the, um, the light infantry. My Jaegers pulled them back before, um, before they were overrun. Because they seem to have lost quite a lot of men. And there we have it. Victory. I'm going to make sure though that we run down as many of these as possible. So though we don't have to face them in the town battle. But that's Denmark for you. They're gone. The entire thing actually only counted as a close victory. Where I don't know where they got that from. Because I only lost 460 men. Compared to the Danish army who lost 3,500 leaving only 500 troops left to retreat back to Christiania. Which is... I don't know how they could possibly see that as a close victory. It's, a, like, one of my best victories, I'd say. And, like, the, the, like one of the most cleanest done. If, if we hadn't lost so many um, riflemen... I mean, that's almost, what, well, that's almost 200 soldiers that was unnecessarily lost. So that would at least bring it down 150, so that would only be 300 casualties, which would have been epic to say the least. I like how the fight actually somehow ended up here. Lusher can continue, and I mean, it's, it looks like an auto resolve. Uh... Non entirely sure I, I dare do it because apparently they still have 3,600 men here. I guess just because of the old armed citizenry. Um, but I think what I'll do is if a unit dies, I'll have to play through it. But otherwise, I think we'll just out resolve it. Go ahead and auto save and uh, boom. So no unit was died. We only lost 500 men and we killed the entire army. And I'm going to liberate Norway. Hey! A new nation rises. Norway. And he's now mentioned in dispatches. And he will forever be known as the German conqueror who released Norway. Um, Norway trade. We want all that fish or whatever it is you're selling. Norway is friendly with seemingly everyone except the Pope and Sweden, which is not that surprising. The Pope is a bit why the Pope would dislike Norway. France also kind of dislikes Norway for some reason. I mean, in this time period, it would be... I mean, look at what is Norway at this point in... They've got one port... And they've got one lumber yard. And that's about it. I wonder, I think I might actually get better resupply in Norway than I get in Sweden. But Norway is free. I will be known as the... Uh, what else? I guess we can give them a lot of technology just to bring them up to par. 
Erik the First of Norway. He kind of looks like a vampire because he still has got he's got like a wig and everything. We will bring you up to the modern standard Norway. They're feeble and destitute. How much money do I get from Norway? Uh, let's see. What am I? National summary. Other. At this point, I get nothing from Norway. Zero. Uh, Holland, 1500. Uh, Belgium, 1300. Norway, zero. I get, I get one or two CODs. Um, that they mail me. But then we have that. I wonder if Sweden's gonna declare war on me just to get Norway. That might have been a mistake. Should have probably just given it to Sweden. Sacked it and gave it to Sweden. Um, right. So my plan will be I'll probably do a few turns back and forth off camera. We might try to burn this place down again. Just to have the. Have the French um, being a bit uneasy, but otherwise I'm gonna try to get um, get one army over here so we can kind of. Well, I guess we'll try to strike here first and cut the French, cut the French off, and then start cleaning up this and help Austria possibly. We'll we'll see what I plan, but that could definitely be uh, part of my plan right now. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!